Hello and welcome to this video teaching you how to build your first Logi dashboard. Hopefully you've checked out our previous video on the capabilities of the Logi dashboard. This video will teach you how you can build your own dashboard using Logi Studio. To start, let's open Logi Studio. First, we will create a report. To do this, go to the left-hand side of the page, right-click on Reports, click Add, then click New Definition. After the report is added, rename it Dashboard. To create a dashboard, we need to insert the Dashboard Super Element into the Logi report. We can add this element by first clicking on Body. On the right-hand side of the page, there will be a list of general elements. Here you can find the dashboard element. Double-click this element. Then, click Just Add the Dashboard Element. You can also add it by right-clicking Body, going down to General Elements, and clicking Dashboard. Please note that only one dashboard element is allowed per report definition. A dashboard is made up of a collection of panels. We'll go through how to add panels to the dashboard in a few minutes, but first let's look at some of the attributes of a dashboard. To see the dashboard's attributes, click on Dashboard and look to the right side of the page. For the dashboard element, we need to provide an ID. An ID is a unique identifier for the dashboard. The ID for this dashboard will be Sales Dashboard. The dashboard layout and changes are specific for each user. In the Save File attribute, we will provide the path where the user-specific file should be saved. If Logi Security has been used in the project to control access, the user's name will appear in the function Username Token. This can be embedded into the Save File attribute to provide separate files for individual users. Note that we can also store these files in the database. For the dashboard, these are the two required attributes. However, note that Save File is not a required attribute if Auto Bookmark feature is on. Let's review some of the optional attributes. Allow Freeform Layout specifies whether Freeform Layout mode is enabled. Auto Global Filters specifies whether dashboard panels with analysis filters and or those generated from an analysis grid that uses the Active Query Builder element will have the global filters created automatically. Auto Panel Filters specifies whether dashboard panels generated from an analysis grid that uses the Active Query Builder element will have panel filters created automatically based on its metadata. Dashboard Adjustable determines if the user is allowed to add, remove, and manage tabs and panels. Dashboard Column specifies the number of vertical columns, 1 through 8, that the dashboard should be divided into. Columns are automatically sized to fit the available space. When Allow Freeform Layout is true, this attribute must be 0. The default is 3. Dashboard Tabs. When true, this allows the user to put dashboard panels into different tabs. The user can create, rename, reposition, and remove tabs. The initial tab is created automatically. Disable gallery updates. This specifies whether users can delete panels at runtime from the gallery specified below in the gallery file attribute. Disable global filters from panels. When auto global filters attributes is set to true, the user is able to click certain types of visualization, such as charts, to add or update a global filter. Setting the attributes to true will prevent those clicks from adding dashboards to global filters. Gallery caption. This specifies a caption for the gallery specified below in the gallery file attribute. Gallery file. This specifies the file where charts and tables created by users at runtime using analysis grid can be accessed for use in the dashboard. Save file starter specifies a file to be used as the initial save file in cases when the save file does not yet exist. Template modifier file. The name of the template modifier file, if any, is used to customize the dashboard. Now that we have walked through all the dashboard attributes, let's add a panel to our dashboard. A panel is essentially a container for other child elements. A dashboard can contain one or more panels. To add a panel, make sure Sales Dashboard is selected, then click Panel in the General Elements section. Let's look at the required attributes for the panel. Caption. This specifies the text displayed in the panel's title bar and is used as a title in the dashboard configuration page. ID. This specifies a unique identifier for this element. 
Now let's walk through some of the other optional parameters for the panel. Allow caption rename. This specifies if the user is allowed to change the dashboard panel caption. When true, the rename item appears in the panel settings menu. Image. This specifies the file name of thumbnail image that will appear on the left side of the add panels panel. Minimum height. When the dashboard has been configured for freeform layout, this specifies the minimum height in pixels to which a panel can be resized. Minimum width. When a dashboard has been configured for freeform layout, this specifies the minimum width in pixels to which a panel can be resized. Multiple instances. When true, the dashboard panel can be added multiple times to the same dashboard or tab. Panel description. This specifies the descriptive text for the panel that appears in the Add Panels panel. There are also security right ID and tooltip, but they are not important for this video. Let's create a chart in the panel to show sales by category. I'm going to specify the caption and ID. The caption will be sales by category. The ID will be panel underscore sales category. Let's select an image for the panel. I'm going to add a pie chart image. Additionally, let's add a description for the panel. Next, under the panel, we'll now add the panel content element. The panel content element defines content of the dashboard panel, such as charts, gauges, and tables. Next, let's add the chart canvas element. To do this, first scroll down to the charts, gauges, and GIS map section of the general elements. Here you will find the chart canvas element. Next, give it an ID. We will call ours chart sales category. Let's add a data layer to get my sales data. In our case, we are using the SQL data layer, which we can find under the relational database data layers. In our application, we have already added connection to the database in the settings file. On the optional attributes for the SQL data layer, let's select MySQL server connection. Next, let's add a source to get the data. In my query, I'm getting the category and total sales for each category. After this, let's give a unique ID to our data layer. Next, we are going to add a pie chart. To do this, first click on the chart canvas element. Then from the options on the right, add the pie chart. For the required attributes, specify the Y axis. We will select line total. Then we will add a label in the label data column. Let's select category name. Now I'm going to change my pie chart to a donut chart by specifying a donut hole size of 50. Let's save our changes. I'm now going to run my report. Here we see our panel. Click Add and then click Done. Now we see that the panel is on our dashboard. See, creating your first dashboard is simple. Now that we have seen how easy it is to add a panel, let's add more. I have a few pre-built panels that I'm going to add under the dashboard element. Running the dashboard now gives me the option to add these panels to my dashboard. There they are on the dashboard. Thank you for joining us for this video teaching you how to build your first Logi dashboard. Have a great day.